For anybody that's looking to start a ketogenic diet, the biggest piece of advice I would give is that they need to get some knowledge. Find out as much information as possible. Look at the website, uh, talk to other families if you can, if you can have a chat with some of your uh, other families that may be a part of your dietetic clinic that you're visiting now. Um, that will all help you. This chapter will hopefully give you some ideas on how to manage the diet on a day-to-day -day basis. Batching up is a very good thing to do on a ketogenic diet. It just means that if, you've, if you're making one, you multiply up the ingredients and you make 10 or whatever, however many many as you like, as long as you've got the ingredients to make them. And it, it just means that if you've got an evening where you don't feel like cooking or say everybody's having spaghetti bolognese and you've got one in, in the freezer, you can just take that one out for your child or, or for an adult who's on ketogenic diet. It, it just takes that extra work away. Muffins are so easy to batch up. Um, all you do is if you've got the amount for one muffin, multiply it up by however many you want to make and you, you can put those in the freezer, pop them out the night before and have them for breakfast. You don't want to be weighing out food every single meal. The diet can be done really well in school, but communication is the big key with this one. Uh, and supervision, especially if it's, you know, a little child. So you need to go in and talk to the teachers, talk to the teaching assistants if there are some. There are certain issues that some schools will look at, i.e. the reheating of food, what happens in an emergency, such as, you know, little kids, they knock half their dinner off on the floor. So there'll be things like keeping emergency dinners at school just in case something like that happens, making sure that the teaching assistant at lunchtime scrapes the bowl to make sure they get all the calories from the food can be a very basic one, but can make all the difference. So communication is the big key. And also give the school the information, give them a copy of this DVD, give them a copy of the booklets. Um, let the other children in the class know that it's a special diet. Everybody needs to be on board. The more people you communicate with, the easier it is. And hopefully they'll come on side and they'll work with you in these situations. It's obviously a different scenario when you're talking to adults and they're, they're on a ketogenic diet and they're having to go to work and go out with colleagues and they're trying to live uh, a full life. Now, they're not on as the restrictive ketogenic diets as children are, but still they have to watch what they're eating. They have to be careful about things. So I would suggest that they always have highly nutritious snacks with them to keep them going. Maybe take a keto shake with them, keep it in their desk drawer at work, just in case there's any emergencies that they can't get out to eat. They haven't got appropriate foods available if they're going on a work's lunch. Also note the local area. Where is there a cafe available? Because sometimes a cafe is far better than a fast food restaurant to go to because a cafe you can go and order a, an English breakfast with your bacon and your eggs and your, your fried mushrooms and that's fantastic for the ketogenic diet. So it's maybe looking around at different places which are more appropriate for you to eat or go out to lunch with your work colleagues. So you're increasing your choices. It doesn't mean to say that you're a social pariah. Uh, you can still go out for, with your work colleagues. The situation for a child that's going into respite care is pretty much similar to when they're going to school. So again, provide them with all the information you have, talk to them as if you would your child's school. Um, some respite centres insist that you make the meals up beforehand and take them in, and this is where your batch cooking will come into its own. So you can take the meals in and then they can reheat. Some places won't let you reheat, so this is where they will have to cook some of the meals themselves, or you'll be looking at all-in-one recipes that you'll be taking in, which don't require any reheating. So again, it's that communication and preparation side of things that will be so important, but there should be no reason why your child can't go to respite and enjoy themselves fully like they would usually.
It's things like knowing they've got to have the full fat mayonnaise, they've got to have the full fat Philadelphia it, and butter, that kind of thing. It's making sure that they know exactly what they've got to use because that's the sort of little things that can go wrong in, in if, you're, if somebody else is doing the food and they haven't got the knowledge behind what they're doing. So the more knowledge, the better. If you're wanting to go on holiday, uh, taking the ketogenic diet with you, then in the UK, definitely, I would advise self-catering is the easiest by far. You've got your kitchen, you've got your facilities with you, you know your brands which you like, you can take your uh, ketogenic meal planner with you. So it's very much a bit of a home from home. You might have some extra bags to take, but it's certainly easy and doable and you can have a nice holiday. And all the same rules apply as if you were at home. You can go out to eat, you can do all the usual things, you just may have to take some foods with you. For travelling abroad, very much doable. Um, the first thing that I would probably do is go onto our website and see if anybody else has gone to the same place because that's always very, very helpful. Even in the same country, they'll be able to give you tips and advice. Um, if you're flying, you would need to get a doctor's letter. Um, you would need to ha have information in the letter about the products that you're going to need to take with you or food that you're going to take with you because if you're going somewhere it's always handy and, and if you've got the letter they will allow you to take them and they will give you extra, most airlines, extra baggage allowance um, for like a call bag, that sort of thing. You're going to need to take um, food for the journey and I would always advise that, that people take uh, extra, something like an all-in-one meal with them as well so that if you get any delays that kind of thing at least you've got something so when you're away stick to plain foods roasted foods stick to oil-based dressings your salads uh, diet drinks all that kind of stuff you're normally on safe ground with that kind of thing. If you take your meal planner with you, you can buy local branded stuff, read your labels, really get familiar with those. Um, but most of all, again, even when you're abroad, go self-catering, it's a lot easier. But some people have been to hotels, maybe inform them beforehand, see what they can do to help you. Again, it's that preparation and communication that'll be the important thing. And as much as you can prepare in the future will make your life easier once you're at your destination. It always makes me laugh when people think or are told that they can't eat out with a ketogenic diet. Of course you can. All the time that Matthew was on the diet, I would eat out and take him with me so he didn't miss out on any social gatherings. Eating out, probably the easiest is pub grub, where you can get a steak or chicken with salad. You have to be a bit careful with things like mayonnaise. They may not be full fat in, a, in that sort of setting. We'd probably bring our own mayonnaise in. We do have a booklet on eating out, um, which gives the tips of where are the best places or how much carbohydrate is in the takeaway type foods. Nando's is probably the better of those because you can get the plainer chicken, that kind of thing. But certainly, yes. Eat out. Got to still be part of society, even if you're on a ketogenic diet. <laughs>